Here again, we have our uh, pulse string capture about three milliseconds or so with uh, just over 100 pulses that, that we're able to capture. And uh, we have our pulse table as well as our summary showing 130 pulses and, and their average values as such. And let, let's try to identify if there's various trains, uh, pulse trains that is, that are occurring over time in this measurement. So um, let's go into our pulse properties dialog uh, and we could see our, our various setups uh, and settings here. Uh, we're, we're going to make sure that we have uh, all, all the selected pulses uh, available for analysis. Um, and then we are going to go to our analysis window once again. And this is going to be really interesting in the sense that um, we're, we're going to look uh, a little bit more in depth than what we did before for the individual pulse scoring, but look for uh, a series of pulses. Uh, so now, uh, instead of this scoring tab, we're going to go into train scoring. And we're going to enable that. And what we want to do is um, we, we can learn a little bit from our pulse table here, and we're going to set up our, our first train. And what we're going to do is that um, you can either um, select pulses from the table, or you can obviously import a, a, a reference table if you'd like. But we're going to use the table, um, and just visually we can see that there's a series of Barker pulses, linear FM, uh, triangular FM, and then CW. Uh, so, so there's four different trains that have each of their own unique modulation on that pulse. So um, for train one that we want to search for, let, let's do all the barkers. So that's pulse one through seven. Uh, so I'm going to say my stop pulse is seven, and I'm going to say my start pulse is one. Let's just make sure that gets punched in just fine. And I'm going to say copy those measure pulses to the table. So they, they pull in here, and again, we have our scoring metrics and base here that we talked about that influences the overall score um, for this. And what we can see right now is that with this train one enabled, it highlights in the acquisition time as well as the measure time, all of the times throughout the overall acquisition that we have, that series occurs. And that's incredibly useful to find patterns or maybe radar modes or things like that. Now, I also want to set up the other trains for the linear FM, triangular FM, and CW. So I went ahead and pre-populated those uh, with the uh, appropriate pulse numbers, uh, with the start and stop pulses accordingly. And we're just going to enable those. And we can see, as we turn those on, we have different color gradings that recognize when each one of those pulses happen. So in, instead of pulse scoring, where we had to manually search through the table and look for high correlation values to see when those patterns occurred, we can now easily define one or several pulses as a pulse train and it'll automatically search through the entire acquisition to find when that one train or several trains occurred. So now we have a very easy color-coded way to, to visualize uh, how a signal of interest is reacting uh, to a very complex environment. Maybe you have a known radar signal and you have that as a uh, uh, a pulse train definition, and but you have some sort of jammer response. So we can easily put the reference uh, pulses or PDWs into the train search uh, methodology here under the analysis window. Um, and then things that don't pop up, uh, maybe those end up being the jammer response. So it makes it very easy to go through search and find where things of interest are as well as where things not of interest are. So I really hope this helps understand um, how to use the uh, train scoring uh, identification uh, algorithm, as well as some of the value of it. So feel free to play around with this, and uh, please uh, you know, use this to the advantage of being able to identify patterns. And one more thing that we can do with uh, the pulse train scoring is, is not only with the visualization that you see here, uh, but also we have an extra result table uh, called the train search table. So that's where it's very similar to the pulse table, but everything's color coded. And more importantly, what you can do is that um, 
we add what is called the train ID. So now uh, what we can do is we can sort the overall table based on pulse train. So here we can see all of what has been identified as train one uh, altogether. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit more, uh, here, here's the color for train two. We scroll down a little bit more, the color for train three and train four. So it's a really convenient way to start grouping these together in terms of uh, parameterized values uh, for even further analysis uh, to, to see if they, they meet expectation or, or to see if there's anomalies uh, within there.